You're listening to Kitchen Table Finance. Join Dave Shotwell and Nick Nauta as they cut through the complexity of financial planning and serve bites of investment advice that are both personal and practical. Hey, Dave, how are you doing today? I'm doing great as always, Nick. It is a uh, blustery fall day here in northern Michigan. That's right. Fall has uh, came came out raging re- recently, it seems like. So great podcast weather. That's what I like to call yeah, it. Good, good podcast weather. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. So uh, today we're going to continue on with our uh, series on our planning process and uh, kind of a different part of the planning process today to talk about what's going on behind the scenes while we're doing all the other work. Yeah, so this step is something that happens kind of on, well, number one, on an ongoing basis when we're working with clients as, and as a part of the financial planning process, but it really kind of starts towards that vision meeting and then kind of carries out through the strategy and build meetings. And that is the organization step. And so we thought it would be fun to bring on our para planner, Amy, to talk a little bit about how the work that she does behind the scenes to make sure that we one, have the information that we need when we're um, creating a financial plan, but two, um, to make sure that clients are organized and that we have everything that we need and and kind of the importance behind that. So um, we're super excited to have Amy join us today. So Amy, do you want to kind of introduce yourself and tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and maybe your role as a paraplanner here at the firm? Sure. Um, I've been working in the financial industry for about 21 years. Um, I have a lot of different experience in different areas. I recently took on a new role as a para planner um, at Shotwell Rudder Bear. And what I do is I aid in a lot of data gathering for clients and prospects and do some behind the scenes planning. And it, it allows the advisor to free up some time so that he can interact more um, closely with the the clients, the face-to-face interaction. Yeah. You know, uh, when, when people come in the door, they typically have like a big jumbled mess of stuff, right? And Nick, you always, you always talk about how it's a puzzle and we've got to fit the puzzle pieces together. And right. uh, so Amy's kind of the, uh, the puzzle master in the background with the statements and the, the numbers. That's right, and it's—I uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced this before, Dave, but I, you know, it's—we've come a long way since the days of of having a lot of paper. But it isn't—it wasn't uncommon, at least, to have somebody come in and bring just like a box of statements for us yeah. to kind of figure out. Okay, you know, where where does all this stuff go, and where does it belong, and is it important or is it not important? Do I need to keep it? So it's a little bit different than that today, but I would almost go a step and say it's even more important because people aren't getting statements. And so what, what's happening is there's this kind of disconnect because everybody's got, you know, paperless in some way, shape or form. So they're getting emails, but they're never actually downloading or looking at their statements anymore, which, you know, in, in a bad market, it's probably a good thing sometimes. But from the standpoint of, you know, the whole point of the organization step and the importance that Amy plays, it, her role is in this, is that you, we want our clients at the end of the process to know what they own, why they own it, what role it plays in their financial plan and Mm -hmm. making sure that they have a backup and they have access to it when they need it or when someone needs to step in and make those decisions or know what's going on. And so that's really kind of the the importance of the organization step. And, And I think a lot of that is missed now that we're getting, you know, and I'm as guilty as anybody of this. So when I get an email of, hey, your bill's ready or hey, your statement's ready, Um, Mm -hmm. It's real easy to either move that to a different folder or delete it altogether. Um, And and a lot of our clients now, instead of having those big boxes of stuff, have a whole bunch of emails that, you know, probably are deleted or misplaced or not paid attention to. Right. (laughs) Right. Um, So do you want to maybe talk a little bit, Amy, about what that process looks like in terms of, okay, you know, you're you're a client coming in, you've got all this stuff, you know, what's what what are the steps from going from, hey, I'm a new client coming in to, hey, 
I've got all the stuff I need and, and we've got it, you know, put into a, a, an organized, somewhat organized um, digital folder for you or what have you. Right. And what we use is a program called Precise FP and it's a data gathering tool and it allows you to go in and step by step and either put in your information. You're also able to upload statements and organize all the information that way. And that seems to be a, a good way for us to start that process. Um, yeah. That's yeah. And that's, you know, that's, really nice for us because once that stuff is put in there, especially if we have statements, now we have a digital copy and, and we use ShareFile, which is um, a secure vault-like system. And that also can integrate with some of the other planning tools that we have. And the benefit of that is now all of a sudden you're, you have a digital copy of your statements and um, and I can't remember, Dave, did we do, I think we did, we did a podcast on document retention um, a while back. So we'll have to put that in the show notes as well. Um, and just the importance of keeping documents. Obviously, if you're keeping paper documents, that's a little bit harder. But, you know, one of our firm goals is to make sure that we have statements. And we have that important information like trusts and wills and life insurance policy statements um, someplace backed up so that if you need them, we have access to them. And that's something that a lot of clients have everything scattered around. How long would you say, you know, usually you're on this end more than us, Amy. So when you're working with people, it's most people don't have that stuff readily available. It usually takes them a couple of weeks to get that stuff together. Would you say? Yeah, I think it takes roughly a couple of weeks to get everything, um, gathered and then submitted in, um, so um, do you, and maybe this is a question for all of us here, but what kind of tips do you have as far as keeping this um, kind of information? You know, what, what are the, some of the first steps of getting organized and staying organized, would you say? I think one of the most important thing is, is if you can get into a portal where you have access to all your statements at one time under one login. Mm-hmm. Um, that seems to prove to be a lot easier for people to manage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of people, um, you know, one of the big reasons why people come to see us is it's kind of that, well, there's a couple of things going on, I think, and, and chime in here, Dave. One of them is kind of that set it and forget it mentality of, Hey, you know, I know I need life insurance and I'm, you know, 35 years old. So I'm going to buy this policy and then I'm going to put it in my safety deposit box and I'm not going to think about it for the next 20 years. Um, so I think part of that's going on where people just do something and make decisions to have them made. And it's, you know, yeah. do they ever look at that policy again and do a policy review or see if their needs have changed or if their plan has changed? So I think there's some of that going on. Yeah, it gets crossed off the list and then uh, as though it's done and done forever. So there's a there's right. A lot. Yeah. And I know that happens a lot with things like insurance and things like, you know, well, we run into trusts and wills a lot and. Um, I'm, I'm sure Amy, with all of her experience in the industry, could tell us quite a few horror stories about, you know, trusts and wills and beneficiaries. Yeah. That'd be a, maybe that'd be a good episode, um, horror <laughs> stories and financial planning. What could go wrong, right? <laughs> Um, but, and so, you know, I would say not only like Amy said, having one spot that you can keep all of that stuff, but having a plan, a regular plan to review those things and to, um, dust them off and make sure that, you know, nothing has changed around the need for that particular thing, like a life insurance, like a will or a trust or, or designate or beneficiary designations. For sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of in between here where I still, I personally have quite a bit of paper stuff in a file cabinet, but I have done, you know, I've done some of my stuff digitally and, and have a folder and an organized folder, um, but I'm definitely not great at keeping that up to date. You know, when I get a paper copy of something, I don't always scan it in and put it in there like I should. Um, but it seems like more and more of that stuff is is coming digitally where we can kind of organize it and 
Um, but, but I think you're right, Amy, having one location where you can go for that stuff and having uh, some place that makes sense for you. Um, and I know we've talked a lot about cybersecurity and things of that nature of making sure that if you do use an online tool that it's secure and you're doing, you know, passwords and making sure that all that stuff is updated and secure. Um, how, I guess, good question for the group. How would, how are you guys, how would you rate yourself on, um, personal financial organization in, in your systems? The bulk of my of what I have is is done online. I I think I have maybe one account where I'm still getting paper statements. Things like my tax return comes electronically. Um, my estate planning documents are all are, are all electronic. So that's helped to keep me really organized that way. Um, I have a feeling, Dave, that Amy's being modest and that she would um, wash the floor with us when it comes to organization of her personal finances. You, know, you say that because you know me, but on the other hand, I had to split time between two residences for like 10 years. And that taught me right away that if I could have it delivered electronically, I was going to have it delivered electronically because there's nothing worse than not remembering which addresses you've changed and which addresses you haven't. And where's that insurance bill going to show up and trying to track things down. Um, it's, uh, it's much easier for me to do it electronically. And I think at this point we're down to a couple of bills that come in on paper and junk mail. And that's pretty much it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we've managed to get it down pretty, pretty well. The few things I do get on paper, like my um, property tax bills still come on paper right. here. And the first thing I do when I get those is I scan them and I save them to my personal tax folder. Um, because there's nothing I hate more than having to sift through a pile of papers in, well, I'd like to say March. My uh, tax advisor would tell you it's more like, April 10th, but, um, you know, there's, <laughs> there's nothing I hate worse than having to go through physical paper to try to find something like that for him. So, and then I would end up scanning it and sending it to him that way anyway. So, um, I know it might surprise you, but I've got that stuff pretty organized at this point in my life. I count me as surprised and impressed. <laughs> I can tell you, I used to use the, I think they call it the, the envelope system mm -hmm. where any, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm trying to get away from that, but still any documents that I, you know, receive physically, I still have a, a small filing system that I use for that. I remember but, a long time ago being told that whatever organizational system you use, you really only want to touch a piece of paper once, right? Don't like, don't like open the mail, throw the statement in a pile of other statements, come back a couple of weeks later and sort it into some piles and then forget, you know, get interrupted and forget what those piles were for and then have to do it again. You know, just take it out of the envelope when you get it in the mail, file it the way you want it filed and don't think about it again until you need it. Is that what you're, what you're getting at, Amy? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's. Um, the less you have to, to deal with it, the better, I guess. Is Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, you, you know, it's funny. We, we kind of joke about our own personal organization systems. Um, and and the, the funny part to me is when you're getting organized, especially financially, a lot of times it's not really for you. Um and what I mean by that is, yes, you know, it's nice to know where things are and be able to pull things up. But most people have some sort of system that they use, even if it's paper or doing this or that. The problem is when the organization is most important, and, and Amy can probably speak to this because she's, I'm sure, dealt with a lot of it, isn't for you. It's when somebody else is coming in to do a crash course and taking over for you. And what I mean by that is if you have some sort of health issue where you have a power of attorney that needs to come in and start running your financial stuff for you, or if there's a death um, and you, you know, somebody's coming in to take over mom and dad's, 
you know, estate type of stuff. Uh, we have dealt with quite a few of these recently, and it's not, you know, unsurprising when we have an estate claim and then, you know, two months later, we get a new account that nobody knew about. And six months later, and sometimes a year or two years later, we're getting accounts that nobody knows about. And that really comes down to organization. And so the benefit of getting organized, the benefit of this step is not only does it help us in the financial planning process, so you know what you have and why you have it, but it also helps if something were to happen to you. You know, I'm, I, you've probably said this on the podcast before, but um, you know, what can go wrong will go wrong. People make the worst financial decisions when there's the most chaos going on in their life. And there's nothing more chaotic than, hey, mom's sick. She can't deal with her finances anymore. I have to come in and take care of it. And it's chaotic from the get-go because nothing's organized. And so, so then we're really reaching and making bad decisions because we just want to not focus on what we should be focusing on, which is helping mom get, or, you know, healthy or, you know, do what we need to do for mom, not worrying about so, the organization. And that's, so, I think we're having, making sure that your beneficiary information is updated. And I think here at the firm, we try to reach out and touch on that at least once a year and have clients notify us immediately when they need to make a change. Yeah, it's, that's that's a good one. And back to the set it and forget it. You know, people make those beneficiary choices when we open accounts or when they open accounts somewhere else. And if you don't make a conscious, like years will go by and all of a sudden, you know, we'll go back and look at something like that. And it's like, why did we set the beneficiaries up that way? Was there some reason? And, you know, a lot of times it's just needs to be updated. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I know that's been a big point at the firm to, you know, make sure that those are on agendas for meetings, regular review meetings. And and I'm always surprised at the number of review meetings where people are like, huh, that's not what it should be. (laughs) Or we have, you know, three accounts that are one way and one accounts that are completely different beneficiary designation. And there's no real reason behind it other than three got updated and one didn't kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, so when we're when we're launching a new financial planning engagement with with new clients, what are some of the things that we are gathering together? What are what are we talking about here that we need? We're talking about retirement, any retirement account statements, four hundred one ks, IRAs, um, life insurance policies. Um, Bank savings, any cash accounts that you have, uh, mortgage information sometimes, uh, anything along that line. Help me out if I missed anything. Well, yeah, and, you know, pensions and Social Security information estimates. Um, and those can be a little tricky to round up sometimes. Uh, you know, we've got to send a client to their employer to ask for a, a pension estimate. Sometimes it can be a little tricky getting the good information from the right people. Yeah. Trust documents, estate planning documents, tax returns are all things that we'd like to see. I know like Dave mentioned that some of this stuff is a little cumbersome to have to gather, but in the end, the, I believe the more information that we have, the more accurate of a financial plan we can create. Oh, for sure. For sure. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we have to back people up a little bit. They'll send, you know, it's kind of the, the flip side. We talk about people going from paper to digital. Um, but, you know, a screenshot of a investment login page doesn't necessarily do us a lot of good. And sometimes we need the actual, it can still be electronic, but we need the actual PDF document of a statement to get cost basis the symbols for the funds and to really make sure we've got the right stuff. Um, because sometimes you make assumptions and you can be, you can be way off if you don't have the actual uh, statement data. Mm-hmm. Another one, uh, social security statements. So um, everybody should have a, my social security login because they're not sending out paper statements anymore. And, 
that's something that um, if you register with them once a year, they'll let you know that, hey, your Social Security got updated. Make sure you go in and check it. Make sure the, you know, the amounts are right as far as what you earned last year. And, you know, that's important stuff because and this is a, a shocking claim, but the government does occasionally make mistakes on things like that. And the earlier you catch that, the easier it is to fix. <laughs> yep, I've heard that. <laughs> what, uh... Every once in a while. Amy, what do you see clients struggle with the most when it comes to getting documents together? Um, statements, uh, being able to upload the statements and get, you know, the completed statement to us is where I see that's, that's the hardest. And life insurance is always another one because I think life insurance can sometimes be confusing as to what we're actually looking for there. Well, and, and, at least once a year, I have someone that knows they have something from an insurance company, but doesn't. they don't know if it's a life insurance policy, a long-term care insurance policy, or an annuity. And again, yeah, without the statement, you know, just because it's something from Lincoln Financial or Prudential, we don't necessarily know what it is until we can, we can kind of dig into the details. Those are always tough ones because, you know, if it's an annuity, chances are, depending on the type of annuity, you might only get one statement a year. And if it's a, you know, a term policy, for example, you might not ever get statements. They might just, right. you might just get a bill. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. If you get a bill, it might just be coming out of your account. And so unless you have the original stuff. Um, so yeah, some of that stuff's hard to, to keep track of. And, you know, that's why having a digital vault and having this stuff in there that you can reference is super helpful. Well, one of our big goals is to uh, get these things in a nice little organized fashion for clients. And uh, that uh, makes the planning process easier, but then it's also part of that ongoing, you know, that, that peace of mind that we're striving for when we're putting together the goals of how much you can spend and when you can retire, you know, knowing where your stuff is and, how it all fits together is, is, is part and parcel to that. Yeah, absolutely. And one of my favorite things with clients or that I hear from clients is, you know, when they go and, you know, we go through this planning process, we get them organized and then they can go to their kids or whoever, if something happens to them and say, you know what, just go talk to Nick and Dave and Amy and they, you know, they know where everything is. They've got me organized reach out to them. They'll know what's going on. I think for me, I, I take pride in being able to do that and help clients with that. But I think from the client end, just having that weight lifted off their shoulders of, Hey, we, you know, we have a plan, everything's accounted for, and it's not going to be a big, you know, search party for statements in the mail or things like that. Um, I, I think that's a huge weight off most people's shoulders when they are, get organized and are able to do that. So that, that conversation with potential beneficiaries, power of attorneys is super important and probably another good podcast topic for us down the road here is how to have that conversation and how to communicate those things. Um, but the first part is getting organized and, and having it all in one place that, you know, pe that people can go to if you need help. Any other thoughts, Amy? Any other pieces of wisdom you would like to impart on uh, our good listeners here today? Or is that about wrap it up? Uh, I think that about wraps it up. Just um, uh, keeping yourself organized and keeping everything in, in track and in online and getting it to us. I think that's all important information. Yes. And, and we are very thankful that you play that role for our firm. Um, cause it's obviously, as we've heard, it's not a strength of mind keeping things organized. So, um, a lot of this stuff falls through the cracks without Amy and we are super glad to have you be able to do that for our, our clients. Um, you know, it, it seems like it's one of those things that's not very important, but it, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes that's one of the most important things we do. So uh, yes, for sure. For Definitely sure. important stuff in the whole process. Definitely. 
right. well um that about wraps it up for our organization meeting and the next step in the process dave is the strategy session which i know is one of your favorites when we really start to now that amy's gathered all this information gotten and organized got it into our systems and we have this vision created now we can go out and kind of move the pieces of the puzzle around and, and build that picture so that's what we'll talk about next week strategery I like it. That's All right. right. That's right. It'll be a good one. Well, thank you for joining us, Amy. Dave, Thanks. as always, it's been a pleasure. And until next time. Thanks. This is a Xenia Media Production.